Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at these two disturbances. Of course, we have that one in the Caribbean and another out in the main development region. And we especially want to talk about that one that is in the main development region because it could become something significant and the Caribbean could potentially be at risk. And so before I go into details... Okay, and so let us go ahead and start off with current satellite imagery and we're seeing here that we have some showers and thunderstorms taking place across uh, various areas and in the southeastern Caribbean, that is where we have that first disturbance and then out in the main development region, uh, you might think that that blob would be the disturbance, but it actually isn't. So the disturbance is located just in the vicinity of the Cabo Verde Islands, right in that region. So uh, that blob is not marked as a second disturbance out there. And and so let's take a look at these close up and so as for the Caribbean disturbance here we're seeing it we have this area of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity so we're not really seeing much going on for it you might be wondering why so we're going to be taking a look at conditions later down in this video and see what could potentially be ahead for this system and so as for the Atlantic disturbance now we're seeing that uh, we have some of that shower activity dissipated within the area. Uh, however, as the system accelerates westward, then we're expecting to see it maybe intensifying into something pretty significant. And so uh, that blob is very interesting. But as I said, it has not been marked as a disturbance. And those sparkling white dots that you're seeing in the center of it uh, indicate lightning strikes. So it is looking pretty nice out there. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at what the National Hurricane Center has to say. And we're taking a look at the five-day graphical trop weather outlook and we're seeing here that this Caribbean disturbance is given a 20% chance to possibly develop so the chance has been at 20% for the system ever since it was first identified and so as it makes its way westward though into the central and western Caribbean it could encounter more favorable conditions and we could see it intensify within the area however what is the chance of this becoming a tropical cyclone and affecting sections of the Northwestern Caribbean? So we'll be taking a look at what the models are showing. And then now going to that Atlantic disturbance. And so the chance for this slightly increased, the chance is now at 30% for this wave to develop and intensify into a tropical cyclone. And we see that a westward motion, a continually westward motion is expected for the system here. And so it could be a problem for the Caribbean, as I mentioned earlier. And so let's go ahead now and take a look at current conditions out there and then we'll see what the model runs have to show. So we're going to be starting off with this water vapor uh, map right here. And so we're seeing that we're seeing some of these yellows and that indicates dry air. And if we look at the Caribbean, that is really surrounding the disturbance and explains the reason. We're not really seeing a whole lot of shower and thunderstorm activity with it because uh, throughout this hurricane season, the dry air has been very abundant in the Atlantic and has been the main inhibition factor of development. And so now we're seeing that it is here uh, preventing this system from really getting itself together because even if you look in the Northwestern Caribbean, there we have that uh, that area of a lot of moisture and we see more activity there than with the current disturbance. So the dry air is to blame for that. So as it uh, as the disturbance makes its way westward though, it could encounter a much more moist environment which would allow it to start to get itself together. But looking out in the Atlantic, there we have that blob and then our tropical wave out there. And that blob, as I said, it is looking pretty good right now on satellite. It has been looking pretty good. And so as for the wind shear, let's go ahead and look at it. And the wind, uh, the wind shear is favorable right now across the Caribbean, which is indicated by those greens. The yellows mean neutral, the red means unfavorable. And usually when the wind shear is so strong, it prevents these systems from really growing and cuts off their thunderstorms. So uh, once we have favorable shear, however, we don't see that really happening with our systems. And so uh, in terms of that for the Caribbean, the system is in favorable shear. But again, that dry air is the main inhibiting factor. And so if it's going to be making its way towards the west and then making that curve up to the northwestern Caribbean and possibly into the Gulf of Mexico, we could see development within that area uh, if the shear stays conducive. But that is one of many possibilities 
and uh, out of the major models we only have the GFS really being consistent about that happening so let's go ahead and look at what the model runs have to show and so go into the GFS first and so this is Monday the 29th of August and so we see all that increased moisture uh, indicated by the teals in the Caribbean the browns indicate dry air so we're seeing that out in the main development region we have those two low pressure areas that we want to take a look at and then going to Wednesday, the 31st of the month, we see that we have that low pressure area now in the Caribbean, just next to Jamaica. And so as I speak about this, uh, we may not have development of that Caribbean disturbance. However, there is a chance that it could be a rainmaker for areas of the uh, greater Antilles and potentially Central America as well. So uh, that increase in rainfall starting maybe about by Tuesday going to Wednesday uh, might affect those regions. So please be aware of that happening. And so looking out in the main development region here, we're seeing that we have these systems starting to get themselves together, mainly that one that is closer to the Caribbean, which is likely uh, the system that is currently out there and so going to saturday september 3rd gfs is expecting that the caribbean system would start to intensify in the gulf of mexico so we see a pressure here of 983 millibars which is the pressure of maybe a weak hurricane and then we have that other system that is approaching the caribbean but with the one behind it not looking too good uh, maybe ingesting a lot of that dry air and then as we head to monday the 5th of september we see that that system would have made landfall in louisiana along the gulf coast and another system we see a pressure here that is pretty interesting 958 millibars and this is a potentially strong hurricane at this point uh, GFS is expecting to cross over the Leeward Islands so this is very interesting here but as we go out we see that it's going to be uh, taking that turn up to the north because it has that opportunity to now curve around the high pressure system there so the high pressure system is really going to be influencing the track of these systems and so that is it for GFS. As for the wave that was out there, the dry air just consumes it. And so going to Euro now, Euro is expecting that we will be seeing increased moisture in the Caribbean come Monday, uh, likely due to that wave that is going to be making its way by, but Euro is not really expecting development of that. By the 31st of the month, next Wednesday, we're seeing that we have this 1,007 millibar low pressure system approaching the Caribbean and we're seeing other uh, development that is taking place off the coast of Africa as well and so headed to saturday the 3rd of september here's something interesting G uh, euro is expected that we will have a tropical cyclone making its way across the northeastern caribbean and then headed to monday the 5th of september here we have this system that is now crossing over cuba so guys this is very very interesting here because here we have these two models expecting that the caribbean will be impacted by a tropical cyclone even though the euro is expecting that continual motion of it making its way to the rest of the greater Antilles and GFS is stopping just about in the vicinity of Puerto Rico. Only time will tell what is going to be happening with these systems but this is the time of year to anticipate this kind of activity. The peak date is uh, September 10th and we are reaching around that time and so we should be expecting to see a lot more of this as we head throughout the season. So let us see what's going to be happening throughout the final few days of August and throughout the month of September but of course I'll be keeping you updated as time goes by and so that is really it for this video and if you found it to be quite informative please have a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best innocent as i can and of course remember to always be with wise